Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons, and it's time to cut out the podcast. And uh, I played a psychic in an episode of a cop show, and they said it's a real thing. <laughs> Uh, I'm Mally. This is the show. Let's fucking get on with it. Hey. <laughs> Great way to end the season. Gotta say. We are hardly making it through the finish line. <laughs> we are limping across. It's almost like we've got broken legs, broken arms. Everything's backwards. Sure. Going across this finish line. And it's almost like I've been drinking wine since we started recording the last episode. <laughs> Ooh, oh, a week ago. About a week ago. <laughs> a full week. <laughs> Oh, man, fellas, we made it. We sure did. Not only is this the final episode of this season, uh-huh. but we're finally talking about the big one, Malignant. We're here. Malignant. Malignant. That's how I say it. I <laughs> do it. I say it like I, Malignant. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I thought about it earlier. I was like, this is how I should introduce the episode. I should just say it like that. Malignant. But we made it, fellas. We're here. This is the final episode of the season. Well, I was I was James Wan's muse when he wrote Malignant. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Boy, oh boy. <laughs> to steal a joke I've already made. This is going to be a, a, a off the rails episode, I can already tell. I'm terrified because I've covered this on another podcast and I'm I'm 90% sure I've almost put the exact same notes down. So let's fucking go, boys. But you didn't cover that episode. Gabriel covered that episode. That's right, so it wasn't this is, me. Gabriel makes me strong. This is a totally new... Gabriel's been feeding off all, all your fetuses to make himself stronger. <laughs> I'm also looking at the wrong notes and I was like, when does Gabriel say... I think I prefer just the oyster. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, All right. So, Malignant. Good start. Okay. So, for those who don't know, when we pick the season, Uh we always pick the first episode together and the last episode together. That's right. And uh, first episode of the season is always in Naranofsky. Mm -hmm. And uh, that tradition may be coming to an end real soon. Mm -hmm. Um, But we always try to pick like a big movie for the finale. (laughs) And I wanted to steer clear of horror just because we keep doing horror movies. But there was no question that we we had to talk about Malignant. Like it was just... (laughs) It was the fr- I think the first movie we suggested t- t- amongst each other. We're like, uh-huh. yeah, th- we're not going to top that. So yeah, I think I said this earlier this season. This was probably my favorite movie of 2021. I, I, Jesus. Me and Mally kept telling you, Nathan, this movie is made for you. You no, have I to know. see on it. This show, you kept telling me. Uh-huh. And I, I kept pushing it off yeah. until Ashley and I covered it. on oh, that's a scary movie. Mm-hmm. And then I was like furious that I missed it in the theaters. <laughs> like I wish I had seen this with an audience. Oh, oh my God. Well, so here's the thing. This is a very divisive movie. Sure. And I, I can't imagine why. I, I, I could not tell you, but uh-huh. I had to make a guess. A lot of critics talking out of both sides of their head on this one. Absolutely. Well, I think <laughs> nice. it's interesting well that this movie has a 76% Rotten Tomato score for critics mm. and a 52 for audiences. Interesting. Which is almost perfectly down the middle, right? Right. Like, I can get why you don't like this movie. Get but, the fuck out of here. But, well, there's that. <laughs> but if you can't see the forest through the trees on this movie, maybe that's the reason why you're not enjoying it. And yeah. I'm not going to sit here on a high pedestal and tell you you're not watching the movie right. But <laughs> I'll say this. Priscilla yeah. and I have seen this movie. Mm-hmm. I watched it once by myself. She watched it once by herself. She hated it. I loved it. Yeah. And on this rewatch, she caught the last like 20 minutes up with me. And she was like, this movie's so fucking stupid. I hate it. And I'm like, but do you get it? Like, do you, do you get the point of the movie? And she's like, no, this is just a bad movie. Like, I don't, I was like, Priscilla, this is, mo- the whole movie is a joke. Like, it's it's James Wan making fun of himself. I mean, yes. I mean, it is like, it, and it's also, we we get, we can't discredit the secret sauce that is Akilah Cooper's screenplay, which yes. like says the most bonkers things in the most straightforward way. Yes. I mean, James Wan took a script that is a, a would be ridiculous for an X-Files episode uh-huh. and shot it like a fucking Argento film. Exactly. <laughs> it, this is this is basically a Giallo film of yes. 20, the 2020s. Like, uh-huh. Again, I don't fault you for it if you don't like this movie and I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but I just think that, I think a lot of people just didn't get it uh-huh. and that's that's discouraging. And it always feels like that's such a cop-out to say, right? Yeah, but I, I yeah. truly do. I'm like, if you, if you 
can groove on the same frequency as this movie, yes. there's nothing better, man. Yes, like, meet, I- <laughs> meet the movie at the level that it wants you to be on. Uh-huh. And maybe it's a thing where people thought they were getting another Conjuring or another Insidious. Sure. And they, they walked out disappointed. But like, I mean, this has become the gold standard, right? Because yes. every time a new horror movie comes out, we're like, is this the new Malignant? Yes. Like, a orphan First Kill was supposed to be the new Malignant. Exactly. Is Barbarian the new Malignant? Is Megan the new Malignant? And so far, none of them have reached that level yet. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, we've we've used that comparison so many times in the past year. We have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nothing has lived up yet. And, and look, <laughs> I, I think I enjoyed Megan way more than you did, mm-hmm. but I, I also saw it like in a full theater while drunk, mm. and it's just those are some of my favorite movie experiences, and I think that uh, th- this team is making movies specifically for that. Like, I would, <laughs> I'd rather watch a thousand Megans before I see another David Gordon Green Halloween movie. <laughs> sure, I thought you were about to say they're making movies specifically for you, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of would agree. <laughs> well, yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> No, if it, yes, they're making they're making horror movies where I sit in the audience and yell "Slay, Mama!" I'm uh-huh. Like, yes, of course. <laughs> well, I don't like that one bit. <laughs> uh, Slay, Briel. Oh my! <laughs> r- oh. Would it be amazing if they just wrote two like fake special thanks, Nathan Simmons, like and they didn't tell you, and you just went and saw the movie? Oh my like, god! <laughs> I just <laughs> just squirted wine out of my nose. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk about that. You you for last week's episode, yep. you got wine and we didn't even bring it up. Like, Not a big deal. <laughs> I've just been drinking wine for seven full days. <laughs> So yeah, I think I talked. We talked about this on the Possessor episode, but uh-huh. I watched this movie for the first time back to back with past guest Michael Moss. Uh-huh. This movie and Possessor. Could you imagine a double feature? What like- a double feature! <laughs> Wait, yeah. back to back? back? No, Whoa. not enough Gabriel Dick in this one. Not enough Gabriel Dick. Oh, you didn't watch the director's cut, I see. <laughs> But yeah, I, I loved it right away. Uh-huh. I think the moment it took for me to realize what I was in for and like to under and click with this movie, mm-hmm. and it's something we mentioned off air, but <laughs> is it I'm adopted? Yes. The second that Madison says I'm adopted, <laughs> kick in the Pixies cue, like yep. I I lost my mind and I was like, okay, I get what this movie's doing now. Like, and like it, it is so it's so melodramatic. She hasn't actually said something fully insane Mm -hmm. like and out of context it's the funniest thing in the world but like this is a a soap opera it's a a horror soap opera 100 percent. it is it is a show that sydney's character would be in (laughs) and i love it so much and i i but i keep coming back to this thing where i'm like you cannot fucking use that musical cue for a movie that has this twist well i know so i think you can but only because of what the movie is right you like, hope the audience is in on the joke. If you don't get it at that point, I don't think you're ever going to get it. Yeah. And the most negative reviews of this movie keep talking about how silly it is. And I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, it's meant to That's be the silly. Point. Yes. It's, it's the entire fucking point. Yes. It, it turns into a Matrix fight halfway through. What are you talking about? Good of course God. it's a joke. Uh-huh. And buddy, it's amazing. It's perfect. It's, it's it's a great movie. I I hope we get a sequel to this. Yes, I really me do. Too. I, I have a feeling that Megan might have put that on the back burner unfortunately i uh, know with all the sequels as much as i enjoyed megan but like i want malignant to right now somehow gabriel <laughs> returned <laughs> hold on malignant versus megan oh <laughs> megan's getting her fucking ass beat yeah. well megan doesn't have her body anymore she might get a super body in the next movie That's and true. Then, like oh i guess spoilers for megan but <laughs> oh my god wait was megan like a secret robocop prequel oh. i'm into that mm. No. No, it's not. By the way, no, it's not. Fuck. <laughs> it might be a secret prequel to the RoboCop remake. There you go. That's more like. That's more likely, yeah. No, and, and the thing that I love about this movie, uh, first of all, is this the first time we've discussed a James Wan film on Silver Linings? Well, we did do Saw. Okay, the first Saw my time. Movie. We did? Yeah, we did, but we haven't huh. done any of the Conjurings, any of the, the, the Insidious. I think we should do Dead Silence at some point, though. I love Dead Silence. I, <laughs> Dead Silence is fucking rad. Uh, it's so sad silly i love james wan yeah i love i love his i love his whole aesthetic i love his whole deal he seems like a really like enthusiastic filmmaker and you can feel the love on every single frame i think that's like 
one of the big issues with the conjuring three is that he doesn't direct it and yep. you lose like a lot of that energy. Yeah. And, and I, I feel like this movie, like you want to talk about a blank check moment. Mm. Th- this movie is let's let, let's not only let James Wan make the movie he's always wanted to make. Let's let him make every movie he's always wanted to make. <laughs> <in the world. laughs> let's just put it all in on the screen for this one time, which is why this movie feels like conjuring sequel and an X-Men film at the same time. Fuck. This is like a special treat, right? Like he made all that money for Aquaman uh-huh. and like all the the Insidious and Conjuring movies. Furious Seven, right? Didn't he direct Furious yeah, Seven think, as well? Yeah, yeah. I think he, he did one of them. Yeah, he, he, no, it was Furious Seven. This, this is like the the gift that you get for doing that, right? Like because right. this doesn't happen for a lot of lot of like I don't want to say smaller filmmakers because James Wan's clearly not that anymore. But like nobody gets blank checks like this really anymore. No, it's it's the same school of thought of like, okay, Tim Burton, you made Batman, now you get to make Edward Scissorhands. Yes. And I mean, we did a Lee Winnell movie earlier this season, The Invisible Man. Now sure. we're doing a James Wan movie, so we're like getting the the, the duo back together. Like, <laughs> right. and both these movies rule. Yes, like I love this movie. I'm excited to talk about it, and I know we have a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump to the production. Mm-hmm. In case you're not familiar too much with Malignant, but we'll tell you all about it. So the year is 2021. As we mentioned, the director is James Wan. The movie stars Annabelle Wallace, George Young, Jake Abel, Maddie Hassan, McCall Brianna White, Jacqueline McKenzie, Ingrid Bisou, John Lean Brody, Paula Marshall, Patrick Cox, Rachel Winfrey, and Paul Mabin. George Young, who plays Kakoa Shaw in this movie, oh. was in that uh, Lindsay Lohan Christmas movie that just came out. Oh, like, <laughs> really? Huh? Falling for Christmas. Like we, uh, Ashley and I watched it because we have a soft spot for terrible like Netflix Christmas movies. Sure. And about 20 minutes in, I go, hey, that's that detective you think is so hot and malignant. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny you mentioned him because I wanted to bring up Ingrid Bisou, who is one of the producers of this movie Mm -hmm. and is maybe my favorite character in the movie. Who does she play? She's the forensics detective that is so in love with Kakoa, but like he doesn't he doesn't see Uh, it. Man, she's essentially the character from Sherlock. Yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) I love her so much in this movie, but she's got maybe my favorite line of the movie. Yeah. Maybe. But we'll talk about when and get there. Um, the movie had a budget of forty million dollars and only grossed thirty-five million dollars worldwide. Mm. I still consider that a success. We fucked up. <laughs> Wait, this movie had a higher budget than the menu? Uh, yeah, by like ten million bucks, I think. Yeah, fuck. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Not enough Gabriels in the menu, honestly. <laughs> I, that's the one big flaw that movie has. <laughs> and uh, the movie currently sits at a seventy-six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Honestly, higher than I expected. Yeah. yeah. And again, that's the critic side. The, sure. the audience side is the 52. But 76, again, if you understand what this movie is, mm-hmm. I think that's fair. Yeah. Same number of trombones in the music, man. Mm-hmm. 24% <laughs> of people are fucking idiots. <laughs> 24% of people are malignants. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Are malignants. All right, well, let's watch the trailer because I I've only seen the trailer once. It was before I understood what this movie was, and I don't think they give away the ghosts in this trailer. So I'm excited to see. Uh-huh. There's no ghosts in this movie, Dustin. You <laughs> fucking moron. But the trailer almost looks like a ghost movie. Yeah, well, they treat Gabriel like a ghost at the beginning. Uh huh. All right, here we go. I'm having It doesn't hurt that she basically lives in the conjuring house. I was going to say, James Wan just keys reusing this house, doesn't he? He loves his 70s decor. Yeah. The geography of this house looks exactly like all the houses in his movie. Uh-huh. Guy knows what he likes. I am enamored with Annabelle Wallace. She's so captivating in this movie. She she has some awkward moments, but I think this cast is unbelievable in the fact that they're able to deliver some of the most ludicrous dialogue I've ever heard in my life. Right? Yes. Well, she gives off. She's a couple hairs away from being Christine Brown from Drag Me to Hell. Oh like my gosh, kind of, yes. Uh-huh. But like she plays it so straight mm-hmm. and that's why I love it. No, I love this cast. I love Susanna Thompson too. Mm-hmm. Like she's so good. And the voice of Gabriel is like an anime voice actor and it fits. Ray Chase, yes. yeah. Who he voices Etrigan the Demon in Justice League Dark. He's done stuff in ReZero, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, he rules. The voice for Gabriel is so, it's such an anime villain. I love it. It's excellent. Would you all shut the fuck up? I'm trying to watch this trailer. <laughs> I was just going to say he took over from Troy Baker as Reese in Borderlands 3 oh. and like does a pretty good Troy Baker impression. Whatever it was, 
Vincent's back. He killed again. He's getting closer. He wants to talk to you. Mom, what do you know? He's coming for me. This is a great shot. Ugh. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, this trailer does not. Fellas, <laughs> that trailer made me want to watch the movie again, right? and I rewatched it today. Uh, guys, let's after the after the recording. Can y'all just shut the fuck up? I want to throw the movie on right quick. <laughs> <laughs> after the recording, let's let's get on a call. Actually, D DC, you got it queued up. Just push play. Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah, just push play. Uh, as we're recording, I'm just gonna play it if that's okay. Uh -huh. with yeah, we'll live watch this motherfucker. I don't care. Should we? Ooh, should we do a live commentary from Malignant? Not <laughs> Maybe not now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what the season finale is. We just do the movie. Like, yeah. We should act it out. Hey, motherfucker, would you push play? <laughs> Pop them subtitles on. We good to All go. Right. Hell yeah, WB logo. What up? The worst WB logo. I hate this new blue logo. Uh, it's so ugly. Legally, I cannot talk shit on WB at That's the moment. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the movie opens at Arkham Asylum. Okay. Nathan, I'm glad you said that because my first note is we started Dr. Weird's castle. <laughs> This castle slash mental hospital. It's, it's uh, the mental hospital for mystery men. <laughs> this fucking yeah. silver surfer looking motherfucker here. Yeah, it sure is. And the way you know what this movie is right away is uh -huh. he brings back the green filter that we haven't seen since like The Ring. Oh my gosh. Like the early 2000s horror movies that all had this filter on it. I mean, the opening credits are Saw 1. Uh -huh. Like it's, <laughs> it's like surgery footage with dubstep. Like <laughs> this song, I think it fucking slaps for this movie. Oh, like it's the not score is great uh -huh. in this movie. I listen to it a lot. It's not something I would just put on by my like just to listen to like this opening song, mm -hmm. but it's so early two thousands. You can't trust a woman named Florence. <laughs> The woman named Florence says, will break your heart, man. Um, Don't worry, darling. <laughs> thank you. This is, this whole movie is like, the allure of it is that it's a throwback to those campy, shitty horror movies of the odds, uh -huh. right? Like, uh -huh. the only difference is this has a next level director behind it. <laughs> right. And it also reminds you of those movies by oh, putting. Oh, shit. She's speed walking now. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds you of those movies by putting Patricia Velasquez in the first scene, yes. who played Anak Moon in The mm -hmm. Mummy, uh, mm -hmm. was also in The Rest to development is Marta. Oh, damn, just fucking hit the wall. <laughs> this is just James Wan poking fun of himself, right? Sure. Because like this is again a throwback to those gritty, gross, gratuitous horror movies mm -hmm. of like just how hopeless things felt post 9-11, right? Yes. Like, yeah. You get the guy that pioneered this kind of feel with Saw mm -hmm. and like he's going back to his roots, but I love that he's making fun of himself throughout the whole movie. And and, and also how can you not tell that you're watching a melodrama? When you hear a character say a line like, oh my god, he speaks. Uh -huh. He's sucking out all the electricity. <laughs> There's a dramatic, like that dramatic zoom for it's time we cut out the cancer. Like, yes. I'm like, hell yes, I'm in. I'm in. And we know right away that this character's name is Gabriel, but we first learn that something's not quite right when we get the close-up of the purple socks with the pandas on right, it. Right, being dragged across the floor. Oh, she is dead as fuck. <laughs> Oh, he dead too. <laughs> Matt, I can't have you commentated the whole episode. Focus. I am. I wish I'm I'm trying to focus. Y'all keep fucking talking. <laughs> So y'all do your thing. I'm doing my own show over here. <laughs> so we we get this, these dope opening credits yes. uh, with this the song smash cut to the present day that still looks like the 70s. Uh -huh. <laughs> Annabelle Wallace driving the Griswold station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> there is a weird thing with 70s aesthetic in this movie, as we'll get to later on. Uh -huh. But like we get this, I don't know this this Derek character, the husband. Oof. I mean, you're you're front loading the whole movie, right? Like a cartoon asshole from the beginning. Yes, I was watching that. You need to stop getting pregnant. <laughs> Maybe you just need to stop being pregnant. It's such a crazy lie to just say to somebody. I'm like, you you helped, uh -huh. bro. Like, it's not... She didn't get pregnant by herself. It it does take two to tango. Mm -hmm. It does. I mean, we know what kind of guy we're getting into right away when he's got his shoes on the bed watching <laughs> U 
UFC in the bedroom. Texting while UFC is on in the background. And then getting mad that she turned it off when you clearly weren't watching it. Uh-huh. That would be enough as, as it is, right? This, this guy sucks. But then the throwaway line he has of how many times do I have to watch my children die inside of you? Jesus. It's like, Jesus. Yeah, like no tact Ugh. whatsoever. Just so awful. As someone watching the movie for the first time and not fully getting what we're doing right away, but like uh-huh. it almost feels like it's too much, right? Sure. Like you shove a pregnant woman into a wall and she's bleeding from the back of her head. Right. But like you're doing this highbrow camp in a way that is serious for the characters in the movie. Yes. But as the movie goes on, not so much for the audience watching. Like that's the trick. And, and that's the thing, right? Yes. Like this movie doesn't work unless everyone is 1000% dialed in. Yes. Like, they can't be showing their hand at all. This movie has to be played serious to a T for it to work. This is a movie where characters use the word yearning. Mm-hmm. Like, like, <laughs> like the, the, they, they speak in ways no one's going to speak. Uh, what? You've never yearned? <laughs> Have you never yearned, my good boy? Have you never, hast thou never yearned? <laughs> DC, do me a favor. Sk- skip skip these credits. I'm interested in this shit. I can't. My computer will crash if I do that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to let it ride, buddy, right, if you want to watch. You know how this guy sucks also is he stores his two liter of Mountain Dew on its side in the fridge. Oh, I Why missed would that. you do that? Disgusting. Psychopath. <laughs> you better hope that lid's on tight. Right? Otherwise, you're waking up to some sticky leftover Chinese food the next morning. Because- so I can't drink Mountain Dew anymore. Oh. Like, that's a weird thing that's happened to me in the last couple years. Oh, buddy. Welcome to your 30s. <laughs> I think that's what it is, right? Like, I used to drink Mountain Dew constantly to the point where, like, I, I tried to get my old band sponsored by Mountain Dew Mm -hmm. and now whenever I drink it I'm just like well this is garbage yeah no it's always been garbage I don't don't know you're just finding out like yeah Mountain Dew has never been good man (laughs) Mountain Dew to pull a quote from last week's movie is the most offensive drink to put on your palate ever could try (laughs) I love there's a um there was a clip of John Oliver drinking some like Mountain Dew Code Red on oh. one of his episodes, uh-huh. and he goes, "What the fuck is wrong with Americans?" <laughs> well, Code Red is fucking disgusting. No, any any Mountain Dew is disgusting, and uh-huh. the fact that it was developed as an alternative to Coke to go in your whiskey, sure, and that that's what they came up with. What is that true? Yeah, no, y'all can take your fucking Baja Blast, Ugh. Taco Bell eating asses, and get the. F- Fuck out. No, I do. I do still fuck with Baja Blast. Oh, uh, I can't. I can't. My secret is I hate myself. <laughs> Nathan, you disgust me. Well, I plan to be dead in like the next 10 years. So well, they keep drinking that Mountain Dew. You're on your way. <laughs> Nathan, I hate you too, but I ain't drinking fucking Baja Blast. <laughs> No, I just, uh, if, you, if you're a Mountain Dew, I think being a Mountain Dew enjoyer also, unfortunately, maybe says something about you as well, too. You kind of get lumped in with a... What's this now? Yeah, you're a fucking child. <laughs> Well, I was going to say that, or you're a quote-unquote gamer, or you're like a, a extreme sports guy. Like, you get lumped into some things. The same with, like, monster energy drinks and things like that. And punching the drywall. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that goes along with Derek, right? It makes sense that he drinks Mountain Dew, putting his pregnant wife this through dude that. loves Mountain Dew and misogyny. Well, I mean, all that's clear. I mean, look at that fucking V-neck he's rocking. <laughs> Shit. That's barely a V-neck. That's a, that's a douche V-neck if I've ever fucking seen one. Yeah, that's a lowercase U-neck. Like, com- commit to the deep V or don't. Yeah, like, absolutely. Get the fuck out of here with that shallow V-neck. Maybe Mountain Dew is like, uh, maybe that's their slogan is like, <laughs> we love our wife beaters. Like, <laughs> Oh my God. That seems to be all that enjoys that in these movies, <laughs> and especially in this movie. So allegedly, uh-huh. allegedly. You know, someone in marketing was like, do you mean the shirt? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I hate those t-shirts. Uh-huh. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about James Bond because he does have a very specific style, Uh but it's impressive that it's still effective after all these years because when Maddie is sitting on the, well, when Gabriel is sitting on the couch and then Derek turns the light on and it's the shadow's gone. Yes. Followed by the cushion decompressing. Like it's maybe the scariest moment of the movie. I love the cushion popping up. I hate that it then cuts to a close up of it. I, I, I wish that was just in the wide shot. Yeah. Like it's so effective. Yeah, yeah. It's a hat on a hat. Do you think that's a little nod to to the Invisible Man? Since Lee Winnell did that movie right before? Uh, no. All right, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I, I just feel like it just smacks of I don't trust the audience to catch this. Yeah. 
I don't know. I like the close up. Maybe, maybe I don't know. And I and I love like it's a while before we get the reveal of exactly how Gabriel is situated, so to speak. Like yeah. he situated. <laughs> it's not until he kills that doctor that we see it's someone backwards. Yeah. In this first scene, all we can tell is that this dude's arms don't bend right. Yeah. There's something off. It's sort of a blurry effect. He's a maniac cop. He's, he's a real maniac cop. Girl, why are you just sitting down? Go to the the hospital honey so, okay i'm glad you said that that's the note i brought up i'm like lady you're a nurse uh-huh. you're pregnant and you're bleeding from the back of the head your skull has been cracked you of all people should know not to go to sleep don't go to bed because she goes to sleep right after this. Mm-hmm. That, that's how freddie gets you <laughs> yeah. okay, I, I do have a question uh-huh. I, I guess we should spoil if you haven't seen malignant we're gonna spoil it right away mm-hmm. if you haven't seen the movie hop on the call we're watching <laughs> it right now if we know that maddie and gabriel are one in the same uh-huh how is Gabriel manifested here in the scene where she runs away from him in the house? Oh, uh, that's all in her head. That's yeah. one of her waking dreams. Because oh, okay. you, you can tell because he he breaks the door, but then it's it's intact when she actually wakes up and finds Derek's body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're right. I've watched this movie like seven times. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So you're the, you're you're a malignant expert, as we sh- we should come to know you as. Yeah. yeah. So you're a resident expert now. I'm a malignant scholar. <laughs> Maybe that's that's your lower third, Nathan Simmons, <laughs> malignant expert. I think it's malignant connoisseur. Uh-huh. Oh, that's perfect. I, I think because I was looking for like hints of like when does this movie kind of tip its hand right away, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's right here after Maddie wakes up and finds Derek's the crazy killed corpse with the bone kind of jutting through the skin. It's right. really it's a really gnarly effect. We love a jutted bone. We love a jutted bone. <laughs> we do. Right after that, we get this shot uh-huh. and it's like twenty cop cars. Oh my and gosh. A helicopter. That's what I wrote out. You know how they fly out a helicopter and thirty cars for one murder, right? Well, no, 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 because. The, the line is, and this is what made me laugh out loud, because I'm like, okay, I, this is how early they start to show you, uh-huh. is the two detectives pull up, Kakoa and, the, and I, I don't get, do we ever get the, the other partner's name? Regina. Regina. Kakoa and Regina pull up, yeah. and one of the cops is, like, telling them, because he goes, what are we looking at? He goes, oh, it's a home invasion. I'm like, you need all this for a home invasion? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. There's a helicopter floating above. <laughs> You're underselling the fact that there's a dude inside whose head has been separated from his neck. That's true, but then you say it's a murder right exactly that's what i mean but they say yeah exactly they say home invasion uh i believe the technical term is homicide there uh-huh. you go there's there's been a moita inside we gotta get because this is still in the 70s but right it's been a moita and then they get inside and uh winnie is a character from how i met your mother like, <laughs> the forensic detective that's her name winnie yeah dude she is the mvp of the movie for me she's i love so her funny. so much she's so good and i realized right in this moment mm-hmm. because she keeps the Maddie mentions earlier to Derek that she keeps having miscarriages sure. and as someone who's seen the movie I know how he's, where it's going to go this movie kind of has a similar setup to another movie we've done on the show oh. way back in season one this movie kind of a butterfly effect oh, of a woman no. who keeps getting pregnant and the child keeps dying inside of her that's the most anyone's ever laughed while saying that sentence Dustin <laughs> I just want you to sit with yourself for a second Jesus. I'm not la- making fun of the situation I'm making fun of the fact that this movie this movie gave you butterfly effect vibes exactly. so you know what dc you take a time out me and nathan will take over for a few minutes you're on time out <laughs> guys i did six degrees of bacon to the butterfly effect i uh-huh. thought i thought i would get an applause break there i'm so sorry i misread the room here's the thing i've never <laughs> applauded the butterfly effect <laughs> and i won't and i shan't i shan't so we get introduced to the sister sydney this scene is so good this is funny as shit because she shows up in this princess outfit yes for no reason i mean that never comes back uh-huh. i kind of wish she was in a princess costume the whole movie i love maddie hassan in this movie she's i think great. she's so great she's so good but she has this moment the moment when when maddie realizes that she's lost her child mm. is just heartbreaking like yeah. the scream she gives but the problem is the following scene kakoa and sydney are talking about her like she's not there yeah like she's <laughs> just not in the room yeah and like like Kakoa, you know, uh, not the greatest detective in the world. You think? No. <laughs> at one point, like in this, at, at, like right before this, Regina's like, you know, the neighbors said that he used to knock her around, and he goes, he beat her, and I'm like, yes, 
that's what that that means. (laughs) Correct. So we go to the morgue Uh where uh, the two detectives are talking about uh, the body. Yeah. And they say it seems like every print is upside down. So the the perp must have been from the ceiling. Uh And man, the way this movie draws musical stings right when something dramatic happens is so fucking funny because the way this drops, it drops musical stings to tell you you're supposed to know it's a dramatic moment. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. It's like a soap opera. Uh Like she she's basically saying that Maddie had motive and Mm -hmm. she says the word motive. Motive. Followed by a sting, and then she puts a lollipop at her mouth to Uh, end the shot. It's so good. So fucking funny. These two are television cops. Uh Like it is it's so perfectly you know, Benson and Stabler. Right? (laughs) Like it's ridiculous. Uh, they're not that good. No, or or that hot. (laughs) Like, you know. (laughs) When I first watched this movie, I, I decided to like live tweet my reactions to it that was the first time i i posted i was like man the lollipop stinger was too fucking much for me it's so great i love it ironically that's around the same time i stopped following dc on twitter (laughs) (laughs) does this house seem unnaturally big inside how small the exterior is even when we get that like poly pocket-esque overhead shot Uh like it feels this house was enormous it feels expansive yeah it's like going into the myers house in halloween five oh absolutely (laughs) stay tuned so maddie gets released from the hospital and goes home and man i don't know if i could go back into my home if i was the victim of a home invasion no where the perp wasn't caught no right yeah you know how they just let you go back to your house that someone was murdered in and unsupervised yeah especially and then, when she's the main suspect right then she leaves both the front and the back doors unlocked well so does she leave the doors unlocked or is this another vision of that Gabriel's giving her I a guess. walking nightmare. That's the, the, true. See that, my first viewing of this, I was like, wow, this is the worst final girl I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> and then on this one, I'm just like, who's to say what's real and what's Gabriel? That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. No, this this top-down view is excellent. It's, it's great. Oh, it's fucking dope. She's a rat in a maze, right? Uh-huh. Like, she's, she's in Gabriel's trap. And it's a great motif. When the movie starts really laying it on thick, too, where she's she literally slams the door closed, locks it, and repeats it's, it's all, all in, in my, my head. head over and over again i wrote down girl if you only knew <laughs> <laughs> oh she's seen the movie before uh-huh. yeah, right sydney comes over and she's talking with madison and then yeah, madison's precinct 13 to her house <laughs> she has there's a th- maybe the shortest montage ever it's like four <laughs> yeah. shots and she's drilled into the wall you half expect it to cut to her like putting legos on the floor uh-huh. and- <laughs> home alone in her own house yeah uh-huh. she comes to the house and she's talking with with her sister and she's like she's talking about Derek. she says nobody deserves to die that way but seriously fuck, fuck him. him and i'm like yeah yes. that's why sydney uh, is like my mvp i love her she's the champ up. And then, guys, this is, uh, I talked about it before, but this was the moment uh-huh. where I, I realized what this movie was doing and I was on board uh-huh. because she sits down and she's talking. She, oh, we didn't say, but she lost her baby again. Yes. And she sit down talking with uh, Sydney and she's like, look, I just wanted to have a baby. I wanted to have something I had a blood connection with. A biological connection. Yes. And she says, what are you talking about? We're sisters. And then she says, <laughs> uh, Sydney, I'm adopted. Cut to... <laughs> This where is my mind cover and the slow push it on the sister's face it's this is exquisite filmmaking guys so unfortunately when i saw this for the first time i'd had a couple of choice moments ruined for me thanks to twitter but this in particular is one of my favorite moments in any movie oh my god (laughs) i could not imagine what the theater experience was like i god i I bet that was fucking hilarious because i saw this shot out of context and cackled until i was crying (laughs) and i was like i have to see what this movie is I would give anything to have seen this movie open at night with a full theater and then that line hits and man. Did any of us see this in the theater? I, I no. did not. I saw it on HBO Max. Yeah, yeah same. same. That's a bummer. Because they were doing that thing in 2021 where it was like we put it on for a month yeah. then we put it out on Blu-ray before we put it back on streaming. Yeah. 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 It was weird. It's one of my biggest 2021 follies is not seeing Malignant in the theaters for sure. Same. Uh, totally. And to not have that first experience again is going to be upsetting to not like never experience that with a crowd Mm -hmm. because man that had to have been a fun time and then 
We go to this seemingly uh, unrelated woman in uh, this tourist attraction <laughs> in the mines of Seattle. And I love that this character, like, she's closed up for the night. There's the lights are all turning off and she hears a noise. Uh-huh. And I love that she basically just says, nope. No, fuck that. I'm going to plug the lights back in. Yeah. And, like, it gets louder. The sound gets louder the more she walks away. Uh-huh. And it's, like, almost demanding, like, hey. Notice me. <laughs> Old Seattle is such an insane concept, right? Yeah. Like, the fact that there's just a city built on the city. The city underneath the city, yeah. Uh-huh. It's, I, it's an interesting concept. Like, that would play into something very, like, cool to... I'm sure movies have done it, but, mm-hmm. like, something like... Uh, Kind of like a Jordan Peele us, but like what's going on in the city underneath the city, you know what I mean? Yeah. That would be interesting to see. I mean, that's that's like a third of Arkham City, right? True. Like yeah. the mm-hmm. idea that there's like old Gotham yeah. catacombs. Cool. Yeah. Great fucking game. Uh-huh. Is it ever explained why Gabriel speaks through electronic devices? Um, Because he has the power to manipulate electricity. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> oh, that's the explanation. Thank you. Okay, got that's it. That's the explanation. <laughs> no, it is so wacky to me that the idea that... Okay, so he's this mutated twin that was absorbed in utero but he's able to give her super strength uh-huh. she's impervious to bullets yeah she could control electricity it's like dr banner in the hulk like <laughs> well that's that's how twins work oh okay. sure 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 yeah. you know how like in the parent trap one of the Lindsay lowens just takes like five shells to the chest and keeps going <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite scene of that movie yeah no i i have two cousins who are twins and one of them is fucking right okay uh, that sucks for the other one. <laughs> I mean, I thought maybe it was a thing where, like, when they go to cut out Gabriel, they say they cut out as much as they could. Uh-huh. I thought maybe they just cut out his mouth, and that's how he was able to. But no, he's got teeth and everything later on in the movie. Yeah, and he does it from the first scene before they even do the surgery. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. No, it's literally, they were like... They were throwing out ideas. They were like, what if he speaks through electricity? He has super strength. Fuck it. Yeah. Let's do all of it. I think why they did that is because when Gabriel and Madison are talking, they couldn't just have it coming from the back of her fucking head. Sure. To keep the reveal hidden longer. That makes sense. Because she gets a phone call with him later on. And yeah. Speaking of music cues, though, Uh this ballad that kicks in when Dr. Weaver pulls out this Polaroid from her drawer in her house. Oh, holy shit. I like Maddie (laughs) because she listens to Brian Ferry. (laughs) She's a she fucks yeah. with Roxy music and me too. But you guys noticed this, right? Like when Dr. Weaver's just in her house, for some reason, it's just ballad music that kicks in. Uh-huh. It was so fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we get the first introduction of like the walls falling away and Madison being frozen in place to see right. what Gabriel sees, basically. We get that shot of, which I think is genuinely scary, mm-hmm. of Weaver running by at the bottom of the stairs screaming. Yes, yes. But Maddie's reaction is essentially, that's curious. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And, which maybe maybe is intentional because we're like supposed to see this as her sleepwalking or yeah. it's like kind of dream logic stuff where you're not necessarily affected by what you're seeing. Well, for a brief moment, the movie becomes an insidious movie uh, or a oh, conjuring sure. movie yeah because like she sees dr weaver run by she goes downstairs starts putting laundry in, and then she sees dr weaver in the window of the washing machine yes and man this effect is really well done of, i love like, it. the walls falling away and everything yeah it's really cool and i love how confusing this is for her because dr weaver's like what are you doing in my house and mass is like what are you talking about this is my house and then they play it like she's having a sleep paralysis nightmare yeah you know i i think that's great it's very cool and like i do like that that's basically your one insidious conjuring type scene yes right because that's that you'd see that in all his movies yeah if you look in the background you see patrick wilson and he looks great uh-huh. i mean he's just <laughs> there's also that weird little uh old school 1920s male boy just standing in the corner like that oh, one scene that that is, fuck that is the scariest moment in insidious <laughs> what, like hands down i know little boys are terrifying yeah the next day i mean after he murders dr weaver the next day, uh, they they say the brutality seems consistent with our other courts. So uh-huh. I'm like, how so? One of them had their <laughs> neck twisted, the other one had their head bludgeoned. Oh, I, I don't want to gloss over the fact that Gabriel went to the Sharon Stone school of stabbings people because oh, that death sure. is brutal. Keeps like, going. The blood spraying up out of the the bottom of the floor. It's a lot. Great foley sounds. Mm-hmm. Oh, all the stabbings in this movie. Like the the guy in the hotel room later on. Oof. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. I don't know which words that one or basic instinct. 
stinks. Like, it's rough. Right. Damn. They kill the shit out of him. And, you know, he, he uses the most insanely designed trophy I've ever seen in my life. I love it. I love it, too. Love I love it, too. It. And as Shaw tells us, well, we got to find the missing half. Yep. Yep. And when he says, don't we all? Uh, that, okay. <laughs> Is that your favorite moment? <laughs> that Yeah, that was my line. That, <laughs> we got to find our other half. Don't we all? And the fact that he just doesn't acknowledge Does her. not. But oh. every single time she says something like that, Regina looks at her like, honey, go get laid, please. I, the, the, like, <laughs> I would watch an entire movie that's just from this character's point of view. Oh, the side sure. plot of her trying to find love. God damn it. I mean, she survives. I Hopefully know. we'll see her in Malignant too, Dude, I, please. Spoilers, Nathan. Damn. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot you're watching it right now. If there is a Malignant 2 on the horizon uh-huh. and she's not in it, I I will be extremely disappointed. Right. I, I, I want that thread to keep going because surprisingly, all of the main characters of this movie live. Uh-huh. All the detectives, like Maddie, her sister, everybody. Oh, shit. Yeah. Huh. I have a question for you guys. Sure. Um, Because Maddie does this multiple times throughout the movie. How many times would you guys endure bleeding from the back of your head before you went to the hospital? Twice. Uh, Half of once. Right? Yeah. Because she, like, at least four different times, she puts her hand to the back of her head and it's just blood. And she's like, that's weird. And it keeps going about her day. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. I I thought that I found that crazy. That oh, she, absolutely. And has she never had any kind of like X-ray work done or like an MRI or anything? <laughs> right. Like I don't. I mean, they they try to to make it work with the fact that oh, we suppressed as much as we could mm-hmm. back into her skull. Oh my god! The <laughs> shot of Doctor Weaver just like gently pushing his yeah. head into her skull is one yeah. of the funniest things I've ever it, seen. It's, it's like it's like if your lodger, your like your luggage was too full and you're sure. just trying to shove it in there. Uh huh. I don't know. It's <laughs> tough. I mean, I'm sure that the reason she's gotten by this long is because people like Regina get fucking done reading about sick kids. Yeah, that's true. She's that's just like, I'm, I, I don't want to research anymore. Uh, and uh, we go to this police precinct that is straight out of Resident Evil. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. This looks like the RPD so much. <laughs> and I, it's funny that like Kakoa's still there. And then thank God, the one guy that's in the police precinct that he still needs is still there. Is the sketch artist. Which is the sketch artist. Bosco, who is a character from a different movie. Yeah. Giving like a Jack Black-esque performance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They cut to the drawing that he does later on. Oh my God. Just unprompted. Just here's a shot of Gabriel. Uh-huh. Made also one of the funniest shots of the movie. Holy shit. It's so it's like when it's like when you see the sketch of the Night Slash in Cobra. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> and it looks like Thundar the Barbarian. <laughs> well, there's that, and then like, this, can you scale this woman up 30 years oh, and it's yeah. just a picture of Madison? Yeah, where he, he just hands him basically like a Her headshot shot. with yeah. a filter on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's so fucking funny. God damn it, it's so funny. Does Dr. Clemenson live in a hotel? Uh, it has to be a hotel room. Because they say it's the apartments across from Silver Cup, and also I, just every time I see the Silver Cup Studios logo, all I think of is the final scene of Highlander oh. <laughs> where it's just in the background the whole time uh-huh. so I like to think that these movies are taking place at the same time oh of course of course they are shared universe like right across the street Connor McCloud's just throwing down with the Kurgan I mean you introduced a, a Highlander in Malignant 2 now we got a movie Ooh, that I mean oh. he can control electricity he's gonna steal his quickening I almost I almost heard you faint <laughs> like Jesus Christ. you heard my soul leave my body uh-huh I, I kind of am getting over this. I mean, I don't mind in this movie that much, but why does Gabriel wait so long to kill this guy? I know. We get we get a couple of, like, fake outs. Uh-huh. With, why do people keep going into completely dark rooms? Right? It, f- it felt like that moment in Scream 5 where we're just watching just the kitchen for, like, say, the, really? Oh, my God. <laughs> I was just about to say, Scream 5 is maybe the worst offender of this because there's, like, a five-minute scene of fake outs, and it, it gets too much. Where it's just someone making a sandwich. Uh-huh. That's all for like five full minutes of screen time. And instead, it here it's Doctor Exposition uh-huh. talking about oh that was too long ago. Oh we can't keep going back. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is he on the run? Uh-huh. How can he sleep with that neon light there? Uh, these I, are the I, questions I, I want to know. No, I don't know that. Pull the blinds down if nothing else. Yeah, it's because he's actually Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> if this scene ended with him like laying down into a sensory deprivation tank, <laughs> honestly, it wouldn't feel out of place with this movie. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, we get a- another one of the great shots in the movie, which is Maddie in bed, and then like from the trailer, the walls disintegrating around her, mm-hmm. Gabriel crawling on top of her. It's really good, yeah, really good. And the reveal of his face, like winking at her, mm-hmm. is ugh, it's great. Those little sequences are kind of cool, like where everything fades away. It's and the shit. best. Like I really like them. It's mm-hmm. really cool. So the guy gets stabbed in the fucking face over and, and over sit, again. You sit there with it. It's rough. Yeah. But um, we cut to the next scene which is maddie had this vision she goes to tell the detectives look this guy is dead if you just go here to these apartments across the silver cup you'll find him there i promise you they act like the police are stupid for not following this story i know i know i love it <laughs> in their defense they are fucking stupid right <laughs> they really kind of are kako is kind of a fucking idiot <laughs> But the music, we talk about the music, but the song that kicks in right here, the synth waves track that kicks in. Oh, with, I know. Oh my God. I was like, this is the hardest fucking track. This is dope as shit. This whole soundtrack is fantastic. Is that a song off your guys' upcoming album? We might cover it. We might have to cover that song. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a bonus track. <laughs> so yeah, they find the dead body there. And why they don't just arrest her right there, I, know. I don't know. Instead, they <laughs> let know. her talk to the sketch artist and Regina gives one of my favorite lines in the movie Uh uh-huh so i'm putting out a bolo on sloth from the goonies Uh (laughs) i mean not wrong not wrong at all so she goes to see uh her mom not maria bello Mm -hmm. but looks an awful lot like her Uh she watches these videos of her as a child and it shows that she's always been talking to gabriel and the funniest thing about this shit is we get introduced to this concept of like this play phone oh yeah he's calling her from the skin of phone he's calling her from the skin of phone which is uh not connected any way to like like there's no why why is Gabriel able to talk through that? I don't know. Like is it electric? It's not electricity power. It's it's got to be battery power. I, mean, I don't I'm, well batteries what do you mean? I know, I know, but it's not like it's not plugged into an outlet, which is what I assume. Oh, I don't know. You're thinking about it way too fucking much, yeah. bud. I look, we got to get Gabriel on the phone. No, Nathan, I know batteries could call, could create electricity. I, I'm not well, I wasn't about I, I caught myself before I said something insulting. No, you were. You were like this fucking guy. No, I know. I'm this sorry. Fucking idiot. <laughs> I realized what was about to leave my mouth no 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 it's it was a fair it was a fair question it was a fair it was a fair assessment i mean that was that was what's the first time zone level <laughs> question how dare you how dare you bring this up <laughs> i mean dc your initials are literally electricity man i know oh. i know i'm halfway there i'm halfway there are you living on a prayer <laughs> james wan gets to play with some vhs shit for a little bit mm-hmm. the one thing that takes me out of it is mckenna grace is 100 percent not the age of this character no she's like she's supposed to be what Nine, nine and, she's like and McKenna Grace is like <laughs> I think she's like 15 or something yeah it's it's really distracting because she's she's clearly like being infantilized yeah absolutely and then Kakoa puts it together that there's a third doctor <gasps> that's a part of this whole Gabriel shit so yes. he goes to the house to investigate it oh my gosh and the reveal of the third doctor already dead in the bathtub yeah. is genuinely a great shot like it's it's, there's that but there's also Maddie's Getting ready for bed, she looks up in the bathroom mirror and she sees this doctor yeah. getting ready for a bath. Yeah. And if I looked into a mirror and I saw an old man getting naked, I'd lose my mind. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's It would be haunting to get that image out of your head. Mm-hmm. But uh, the doctor's dead body is so... Remi- like It's reminiscent of like a, like Stephen King's It. Uh-huh. And the slow pushing on it felt very Kubrickian. Like Definitely. I like that shot a lot. Yeah. Well, and, and not for nothing, but we have Andy Bean who is discovered in the bathtub in Stephen King's It. Right? <laughs> in this movie. Yeah. Playing her dad, who, like, this guy just kind of shows up to die in things, right? Like, Very, a thankless role, for sure. This It Chapter 2 swamp thing. Uh-huh. Like, people love killing Andy Bean. Nathan, I think you're the only person that watched Swamp Thing. Man. <laughs> I, yes, I think you're right. Uh, as, as evidenced by being canceled after its first episode. Right. We get introduced to this this scene that is fucking wild. The <laughs> the escape scene between Gabriel and the detective. Oh my god, man. When he suddenly runs backwards at the end of the hall, uh-huh. I lose my it's so fucking funny. There's yep. that and then him spider manning off the fire escapes and Kakoa just being like, What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Chasing him down into the catacombs. God, he the, the falling onto the dumpster on your shoulder. Oof. Oh, yeah, he's Oof. not moving the rest of the night, right? No, he should. He, that should be the end of the scene. Almost, <laughs> he should be like, "Oh, that was a mistake." My back. Oh no, that shit's dislocated as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> right. 
And then Gabriel chase him and this cop run through this factory that apparently just makes steam. Like that's all they do. <laughs> it's, the, it's a Seattle steam factory, man. Oh, Come on, absolutely. No? Yeah, those those factories you see all over Seattle. I learned that from the Kama Sutra, the Seattle steam factory. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Give it to him. Hold on. Give it to him. <laughs> yeah. Then him and uh, and Gabriel have this fight outside of the carriage that Rose and Jack are having sex in. Yes, Did you guys notice? I noticed. <laughs> yeah. I love that shot of Gabriel laying on the top of the carriage. It's really good. It's good. It's good shit. And he he literally, he's Zack Snyder Batman's out the door. He sure <laughs> does. The wall. He, that's what I wrote down, too. I wrote that down, too. He, he bat flex out of the room. <laughs> so good. It's great. I love Akako. It's just like, I, I kind of wish the scene went on a little bit longer of just him like, well, fuck, now how do I get out of here? We got to watch him kind of stumble around for a little bit. Right. <laughs> no, it's great. It's a great chase scene. Gabriel just stomping out the, the drywall or whatever to get to like crawl under. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. I don't know what, what this old carriage is doing down here. I don't know. None of it makes sense, but I'm, I'm here for it. It's part of old Seattle, but it is so jarring to have them suddenly be there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even though I watched the full chase, it's uh-huh. still weird to like get there. But. No, because you know how you can just like kick through an alleyway wall and uh-huh. suddenly you're dozens of miles underground. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you transport it back to like the 1910s. <laughs> uh-huh. So there's also a side plot in this movie, or at least a recurring joke, of Sydney being obsessed with psychics. Uh-huh. Because they suggest, like, Kakoa and Regina suggest that Maddie see us hypnotherapist. She's like, I knew she it. She goes, I knew it. And then you hear Regina off camera go, she's not a psychic, god damn it. It's, <laughs> su- it's, it's such a good line delivery. Oh, lo- oh, man. I never, I didn't hear that line the first time I watched this movie. I lost it on this, sec- on this rewatch. Honestly, even if we don't get a Malignant 2, I'd watch a Kakoa and Moss movie. Oh, my. Like, God, I yeah. would watch that 100%. Ooh, almost like an X-Files, but for just them, like, investigating weird shit in Seattle. Yeah, with different shit. Yes, yeah. 100%. I also, at this point, noted that, like, this movie bumps up right along the line of something that's self-aware, like a cabin in the woods, without ever crossing it. Yes. Because cabin in the woods has similar vibes to it of, uh-huh. like, knowing that this is a joke and you're they, it wants you in on it, but this one doesn't get as meta. Well, it's self-aware, but it's not a deconstruction. Right. So they're allowed, they can play with the form of what we expect from a horror movie without yes. being straight up a parody. Absolutely. Which I think is so, such a clever line to, to toe. Oh, sorry, we're still watching the movie. Ingrid Biso looks so much like, uh, like she'd be related to, like, Ana de Armas, doesn't she? I can see that. She's got the same kind of structure. Sure. sure. I guess. I love that the thunder gathers during hypnosis. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's got it's got a theatrical cue. <laughs> uh-huh. And then I and, and I just I really dig this flashback that shows us how Gabriel has been controlling her since she was little. Mm-hmm. You know, she answers the call just like a lady Ghostbuster and mm-hmm. is convinced to go after her mom with a knife. Uh-huh. Oh, that's a great reveal, too. Get, just get yourself a slice of cake, and she's about to cut open her pregnant mom. Ugh, it's terrifying. It's really good. No, this movie's not without its scares, for sure. And it cuts back to the detectives literally on the edge of their seat. Mm-hmm. They're so invested. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, laying it on real thick, Madison tells us, he became a lost memory mm-hmm. buried in the back of my head. Yep, yep. Then we get, I think... The funniest moment in any movie from the last five years. Oh, God. The lady falling from the fucking ceiling. Oh, yep. my God. Oh, my yep. God. One of the best reveals oh. I've ever seen. Like, I literally, when I watched this the first time, went, wait, what? <laughs> and cackled, like, till I cried. I. Ugh. That's a great reveal that this whole time, because we see the, the woman that Gabriel steals from the from the seattle mines right is in this like warehouse almost looking building uh-huh. and then it's revealed no that's just madison's attic madison's fucking industrial looking attic why she has that giant fan i do not know this house is so fucking big apparently right. and it's so smart because every time we cut to this woman in the attic they use establishing shots of the whole city yeah like we're going to a different part of seattle to throw you off yeah even from this scene of the the hypnosis they cut to like a, a long shot of the city and then cut to her in the attic and when maddie starts screaming after this woman falls through the ceiling uh-huh. police lights are already flashing in her face like yep. they were waiting outside yep. it's such a good transition i love it so much well here's the thing about this scene about her falling through the floor she had to have fallen through two floors because she's in the attic oh my god they're you're on right. the first floor oh, oh my fuck. god you're right. so she fell through two floors <laughs> 
Oh my gosh! I think Maddie needs to get a contractor to her house. Something uh-huh. is not quite right with the structure of her house. Yeah, nah, something's <laughs> something's not up to code there. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Nathan. The funniest line, maybe, of like the past couple of years is. Oh yeah, go for it. When the detective says, "Are you saying the killer is your imaginary friend?" Oh, it's good. I wrote down, "Holy shit!" This movie just gets better as it goes along. I love it. I love it. I love it. Do you think it's a missed opportunity not to put Peter Gabriel on the soundtrack of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's, the, it's a missed opportunity for every movie. Um, so this sister goes to uh, the old mental hospital from Silent Hill. Uh-huh. And for some reason... <laughs> pulls up to the cliff. <laughs> why does she park here? God damn it. It's so funny. It also seems to take her three hours, to, like all day to get there. Yeah. Like it's the middle of the afternoon when she sees this castle. Mm-hmm. And then it's like midnight when she parks. It takes her that long to get there. And then she's inside for maybe three minutes. Oh, like she goes, r- She gets right there. Uh-huh. The f- best part about this scene is how she's going to the records room and you, you've seen this this scene a thousand times in horror movies, mm-hmm. but she's going to this record room. She's looking through the record. She finds the record. She hears a noise, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, shit, what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. The scene just ends. Cut to her in her mom's house now. <laughs> I... Oh my god, the first time I saw that, I... Oh, god damn, I got a good laugh out of that. It's just nothing happened. <laughs> To further pile on the fact that Kakoa is not the brightest detective, Mm -hmm. when they go to the the woman that fell through the ceiling, (laughs) she's in the hospital, he says to the nurse, when will she wake up? And she says, she's in a coma, detective. It's in God's hands, which I'm just like, what great medical advice. It's so he's so fucking stupid for a detective. It's so funny. I love it. And meanwhile, Maddie's been put into a seventies prison exploitation flick. Like this I, that's is... what I'm, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. And man, I feel like such an idiot that I did not realize that this lead villain was Zoe Bell. I really? just didn't recognize her at all. I don't know how. Oh, I, yeah. I didn't realize that until very recently. Yeah. yeah. I, she's so like under the makeup and the outfit I, and the performance. I was just so taken aback by. So I said in our text thread that she looks like a Chris Elliott character. She like. does. <laughs> yeah. Before we get to that scene, though, because mm-hmm. I want to talk about the the reveal of Gabriel. Yes. So Sydney and the uh, her and Maddie's mom are watching these VHS tapes that she got from the lab from the records. Uh-huh. And man, when the camera swings around and you see Gabriel on the back of Maddie's head, yes, it is. Oh my god, I I can't even describe it. It is the craziest shit of all time it's so good and i will be sad forever that i had the reveal of what gabriel looked like spoiled for me on oh, twitter no. oh no i know right that sucks what i didn't have spoiled for me was this was right before this when maddie's mom is talking to the camera and <laughs> Susanna thompson goes they told me she died during childbirth uh-huh. those lying cock knockers <laughs> cock knockers that's a great line <laughs> So I guess we should tell the story. So mm. Madison's real name is Emily. It's Emily May. She is the daughter of, I don't think we, do we get the mom's name? Is it like Serena or something like that? Serena. Yeah. Serena. So Serena was 15, got pregnant mm-hmm. and her mom decided to basically give her away because she said it was an abomination that she was pregnant and serena serena's played by madison wolf who previously worked with james wan in the conjuring 2 right right yeah and so she gives birth to emily in the hospital Uh at eight years old she gets adopted basically and they they told uh not maria bello i don't know this actress's name Susanna thompson Susanna thompson they tell her her mother died in childbirth which is not true because that's the woman that fell out of the attic right that's maddie's birth mom Mm -hmm. and so they tried to help her with gabriel but gabriel was just uncontrollable and it was making maddie like aggressive so Uh what they did was they cut out the cancer they (laughs) sure (laughs) weaver reveals he's an extreme version of a teratoma and i'm like yeah very fucking extreme he's alive and has electricity powers a little bit (laughs) no reason he has electricity powers by the way it's just never (laughs) it's just a thing you know how like when you're a twin that almost gets absorbed you become magneto yeah you become an x-men yeah (laughs) so so they they try to cut as much of gabriel as they can but they can't cut the whole thing out because they share a brain and so they just they just shove the rest of it into the back of Maddie's skull and sew it up. They just push that little face into her skull. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the fact that Madison's able to grow hair right there is uh-huh. kind of crazy and impressive. And but- Weaver, for the third time in the movie, looks directly at the camera and says, it's time to cut out the cancer. Yes. And I'm like, was this like your catchphrase? Did uh-huh. you have a book titled this uh-huh. with her like smiling and giving a thumbs up like on the cover? <laughs> 
if Dr. Weaver were to live beyond this, she would have wrote a book called Cut Out the Cancer. Totally. Yeah. Well, every doctor has a catchphrase. We, right. I mean, we know this. Oh, is that true? Doctors, write in to the to the silver lines playlist at gmail.com. <laughs> Tell us your catchphrases. But no, this this is the, the, the fucking craziest reveal. And then this is where we learned that Gabriel and Madison are one and the same. So every time we've seen Gabriel, it's just Madison. Huh? But Gabriel's on the back of her head. And so the reason Gabriel looks so crazy, like with its contortionist movements, is because he's literally breaking her bones. And moving backwards. To be reversed yes. and move backwards. And so while he's doing this, Madison is just asleep uh-huh. or she's in that fake kind of limbo world where she thinks she's awake mm-hmm. and just walking around. He's put her in a trance, yes. basically. Yeah. And this is where we get what I refer to as the horror goat scene. <laughs> <laughs> so this is maybe, maybe the greatest thing in a movie I've ever seen. This is right up there with the, the Lord's Prayer in Spider-Man for me. This is fucking crazy <laughs> before we before we get there though mm-hmm. we do have to talk about scorpion yes. who we've kind of already talked about already but scorpion is this, is the main villain in this jail cell and she's got a mullet that would make billy ray cyrus blush uh-huh. like this is it's wild and, and she's so aggro for like immediately she's like you get lost on your way to the country club uh-huh. and i'm like she's wearing like madison's wearing jeans and a shirt yeah like, <laughs> and then she madison says i don't want any trouble but she goes fuck what you want <laughs> Dude, honestly, I'm just going to say, I'm going to take her mullet. Yeah. I'm going to put it right up there with Shawn Michaels. It's, it's a great It's really mullet. good. It's beautiful. It's a great mullet. Undeniably. And she's got a henchman that is out of some black exploitation movie from the 70s. Yes. Like it is- <laughs> no, I, I wrote down Pam Greer yes. starts beating the shit out of her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But yeah, the, the, the horror goatsy, as you mentioned. So <laughs> this is the reveal because Madison f- collapses to, the, to her knees. She starts screaming in pain. The back of her head opens up, uh, and that's Gabriel. Gabriel's little face going, <laughs> and it's 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 Quato from Total Recall. Oh like, my it's god, just you're fucking right. Crazy dude, like this this turns into basket case real fucking quick. It does. Like, it's it's nuts. The line delivery of what the fuck? Oh my god, is so, <laughs> immaculate. It's glorious. We should mention this whole jail cell is just full of women, full of women from different periods of time, yes. like seventies, eighties costuming. Yes, and then Scorpion shoves her into Gabriel and yeah. Gabriel just backhands the shit it's, this her. fight is so good this is when Gabriel yeah turns into Agent Smith yeah. for like the next 20 minutes breaks some women's arms in half uh-huh. and like Oh my god! Like bite, like rips the 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 seventies black woman's neck out to like just rips neck it off. Just, yes, yeah, just rips her neck off. Pulls a Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. A Rambo. Oh, yeah, sure, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, different generations, boy. The stunt work <laughs> and the gore in this is out of control. It's, it's out of this world. So good. We should give a shout out to uh, Marina Mazepa who plays the physical embodiment of Gabriel, yes. like a contortionist who literally learned backwards fight choreography uh-huh. and then on top of that had to weave around an automated camera arm yep. that was that was programmed to zoom in at specific moments yep. so she's like really like uh, un- not only a you know a contortionist and a dancer but also a stunt worker yeah. like this is an unbelievable physical performance it is like this is a popcorn scene like Ugh. this is like cheering in the theater like li- she cuts a guy's arm off and throws it at another guy yes, yes. <laughs> I mean that's that's smart. Yeah, is all that is. Ugh, I just so badly want to see this with an audience for the first time. God, I'm one of my biggest disappointments. The shot of Gabriel walking backwards and frantically going through the evidence room is like <laughs> me when I get home stoned and I'm trying to find the Cheez Its in the pantry. <laughs> so you can make your Cheez It casserole. That's right. No, no Cheez It casseroles. We're not doing that again. We're done with Cheez It casseroles. No, I. You know what? I I forgot to mention that I almost made that Nathan, for Nathan, the menu Nathan, episode. Nathan. And then I was like, do I hate myself? Do I want to waste all that money? God, I oh. wish you would have. I'll mail you some, Mally. <laughs> just in an envelope. Yes. <laughs> just cold. <laughs> you got to eat it how it arrives. Copy that. They outdo themselves because there's the jail scene and then it, they have 
the police precinct scene, like in the main room. It's the Burly Brawl <laughs> with Gabriel. <laughs> this is like the Matrix meets Brawl in Cell Block 99. Yes. Like, this, this is fucking nuts. But it's clear. It's fluid. It's well shot. I can follow every moment of this fight. Yeah. It's, it is like the horror version of the raid. Yes. And this is, this is the next note I wrote down. The chair throw oh. is horrors Henry Cavill reloading his arms in Mission Impossible Fallout. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, Mally has been saying the chair throw for years. Yeah. At this point. I, God, it's the best. It is maybe the best moment in cinematic history in the past decade. <laughs> like, how do you how do you not see that and not get this what this movie is doing? This is a joke. Yeah. It's all a joke. And that is such a almost Sam Raimi-esque shot yeah. tracking the chair through the air. It's so great. Oh, there's so much evil dead in this movie. Oh, there's yeah. so much. And the chair throw is the funny part about it is it's so unnecessary because like Gabriel's <laughs> he, already ready to leave. Gabriel could get away. Yeah. They're leaving. Yeah. Like they're not chasing him anymore. It's the scampiest moment of the movie. It is. Gabriel is such a scam. Gabriel's oh. the ultimate scam. Yeah. And, and for listener, I cannot recommend, if you haven't seen the movie, I can't overstate the chair throw. Like, <laughs> it's so unnecessary, but it's the funniest fucking thing. You were talking about it for months before I finally <laughs> uh-huh. watched the movie, and it lived up to the hype. Yeah. It's still one of the best things I've ever seen. Me and DC talk about this fucking chair throw, <laughs> like all those... <laughs> Fucking idiots are talking about Avatar 2. We uh-huh. so do. Yeah, this is my Avatar 2. They're like, have you seen Avatar 2? Motherfucker, have you seen the chair scene? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a wrestling move, like, from the next level. It's, it absolutely it's so is. crazy. And this, this fight scene, like, Gabriel's doing everything because he's got his trophy sword that he makes. Mm-hmm. And he's like cutting off limbs he's stabbing people in the face Mm -hmm. regina gets a shotgun he's like dodging the shotgun shells and like kicking desk into her he does pull like a a jason bourne move when he like breaks krakoa's arm with the chair yeah like (laughs) it's 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 nuts dude it it, this scene and the jail cell scene together it's it is the raid you're right this is the raid in a horror movie dude i wish after that whole fight Mm -hmm. it just cuts to that scene from the bourne movies we're like my god it's jason bourne Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ it's Gabriel. Gabriel. <laughs> Man. And it's not even like Gabriel's not even done. And like two minutes later, he makes someone's pacemaker explode in their chest. Yep. Okay. I was going to ask is this theoretically possible to make a pacemaker explode like that? Yeah, if you're a malignant. Yeah, I guess that's true. If you're a malignant, that's a very good point. You might be. <laughs> if you make someone's pacemaker explode, <laughs> you might be a malignant. I think it says that on the back of the box when you get a pacemaker. It says, be aware of malignant. Emily May, you might be a malignant. You know what? <laughs> if you turn out to be a malignant, I'm going to paint you back portrait. <laughs> so, really tapping into my childhood right now, guys. For Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Again, I ask you, how did we let Larry the Cable Guy happen? Because <laughs> we didn't have a Gabriel to stop him. That's why. <laughs> we, that, was, that was all we were missing. Yes. Dude, I, honestly, I think he might be a malignant. What if oh Larry the Cable gosh. Guy has a malignant? Oh, my God. <laughs> Time to cut out the cancer, I'll tell you what. Y- y'all just give me a second. <laughs> let me think about that for a minute. I, I need to visualize that. <laughs> All right, I'm good. What if Gabriel called Madison and was like, here's your sign? Oh, <laughs> my God. Uh, God, yes. I'd watch this movie. I'd watch this movie. All right, we're at the ending here, so I'll recap it for us. Please do. Maddie and uh, Sydney mm-hmm. go to the hospital. Yeah. Gabriel's there, obviously, because Madison's there. Yeah. They're there to, like, you know, help, like, get, get the mom, save her. Uh-huh. And Gabriel takes over. He <laughs> she fucking shoots <laughs> Sydney in the head. And then, what is, it, what is it? He puts a pillow over the mom's face? Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. yeah. But right before this, Sydney reveals, Madison, he killed your babies. Oh He's my been God. Okay. feeding off of your unborn children <laughs> for years. This is my final note of the movie. Uh-huh. I wrote down the line, which is, he was feeding off your fetuses to build himself back up. Uh-huh. Holy shit, what a line. Insanity. <laughs> a line that maybe would have still worked in last week's movie. Uh-huh. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Wait, what? Put Gabriel at Hawthorne's. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you imagine him as a sh- sous chef? Oh my God, he'd be all over the kitchen. He could do every station. Uh, but then it's revealed that 
all that just happened with Gabriel killing the sister, killing the mom, uh-huh. it wasn't real because Madison and Gabriel share the same brain, the same mind. Mm-hmm. She can do the same trance trick that he can do. She literally says, now I can do all the mind tricks you can. Mm-hmm. I think she's legitimately not great in this. I, no, yeah. I think that's the point. I think it's the point. Uh-huh. It's, like, it's her- like, no, no. Luke doesn't just become a Jedi in A New Hope. Like, <laughs> no, you're breaking the fucking rules, Madison. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like... It's like Nancy taunting Freddy Krueger. Like, sure. It's the same level. And then she puts him in basically a mind prison uh-huh. and says that, you, I, you know, I can control things now. You won't be coming back. And he says, of course, you can't keep me locked in here forever. Uh-huh. Sequel setup. Sure. And the next time we'll be ready for, I uh-huh. mean, it's, it's literally the last lines of dialogue between Magneto and Professor X yeah. <laughs> in the first X-Men movie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's revealed that, yeah, the Sydney was not shot in the head. The mom was not snuffed out. Uh-huh. Madison <laughs> becomes a Hulk and lifts a hospital bed off of Sydney. As she explains to us, it was always my body mm-hmm. that he was using. So I have these powers. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we basically get a next time gadget ending <laughs> from Gabriel. And Somehow, Gabriel returned. <laughs> that, that's, I, that has to be a line in Malignant 2. I want it. So bad. Yes. So, Sydney and uh, and Emily, I guess we should say, not Madison, uh, embrace. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because they do a, a zoom out and then the mom is just in the bed smiling. smiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the last couple of lines are just so cringy mm-hmm. and I love how melodramatic it is. She says, all my life I've yearned for a blood connection with someone, <laughs> yet in the end it was right in front of me all along. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know the way people talk. Absolutely. And Again, Nathan, have you never yearned? I hope you yearn one day, Nathan, for something. Someday. Anything. I hope you find love. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you yearn for love. <laughs> then we get, honestly, pretty reminiscent of the ending of Megan here, but mm-hmm. we get one last little uh, buzz of electricity from, was it a lamp? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. In the, in the hospital room. Yeah. A malignant. A malignant. <laughs> and then Gabriel is, is basically applied. Gabriel is uh, he's still out there. He's, he's still doing it. Or in there. Doing the most. All up in it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's malignant, fellas. My question, uh-huh. should there be a sequel? Mm. Does it feel like this is like the perfect like th- this movie is shouldn't be touched because it like it's the perfect execution of this silly thing. You can't improve on perfection, you know. <laughs> right. Well, I would say you could do a sequel, but uh-huh. it's not necessary. Okay. Like if James Wan comes back and, and the screenwriter and they say we've got an idea for a Malignant Two, mm-hmm. give them all the money they need to do it. I agree with that. They should pull like an Alien Aliens thing though, and just make like just call it Malignant. <gasps> oh, what my if Sydney's God. got a Gabriel? And then it's just a full on. Just- Sydney's got a Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a full-on action movie starring Gabriel. I'm into that. <laughs> They're just dropping Gabriel out of a helicopter behind enemy lines. <laughs> yes. What if they just put uh, Gabriel in like season five of Stranger Things? So, like that's the that's the real guy that's been running the upside down this whole time. <laughs> oh man, they'd get me back to watching Stranger Things for the first time in four <laughs> seasons. Yeah, Stranger Things might actually become good. <laughs> or what about uh, put him in the last Jurassic Park movie? I mean, uh-huh. they always talk about wanting to put things behind enemy lines so they don't have to use soldiers. Drop a Gabriel. In there and some dinosaurs. Why not? Jurassic World malignant. <laughs> yeah, some fucking malignant world. <gasps> I mean, this is like the, just imagine like the president calling malignant, j- like calling Gabriel, just being like, "Only you can solve the crisis in the Middle East." Oh my God, Gabriel, we need you. Do uh, <laughs> malignant and the wasp. Ooh, <laughs> like cross them over with the MCU. Malignant, malignant mania. mania. <laughs> Was Gabriel and the Wasp malignant mania? I like it. Doctor Strange and the Malignant of Madness. Oh, ooh. Or the Multiverse of Malignants. I don't care. <laughs> this came out in 2021, and it kind of opened the door for like all of the crazy, innovative horror movies we got last year in 2022. Like yeah. this, this kicked it off. People just throwing shit at the wall yeah. to see what happens. And it was one of the best years of horror in a long time. Yep. So I agree. I don't know, man. I think Malignant kind of changed the landscape a little bit because I mean, you got movies like Megan and stuff, mm-hmm. but like. I don't know. I, I agree that this is a great movie that I don't necessarily need a sequel to, but I would welcome one with open arms. Sure. I'm into that. If James Wan's doing it. Right. And the screenwriter. Yeah. If they're doing it, I'm, I'm in. If it gets passed off like Conjuring 3, no thanks. What would you do if at the end of Megan 2, like split style the camera just pans over and madison is like at the toy factory oh Holy my shit. god yes. oh my god and then they pan over just a little bit more and it's bruce willis as well yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then they pan over more and it's the ventriloquist dummy from dead silence oh my god make this happen <laughs> warner brothers make this fucking happen yes <laughs> oh my god well, yeah, that's uh, that's malignant. Do we uh, miss anything? Do we have any other notes we forgot to cover? I mean, uh, th- my other question is like, Madison's got to like after she takes control back from Gabriel, she's got to wake up with like eight bullet holes and twenty broken bones, right? That's the thing they never address is she's breaking her bones every time he becomes <laughs> he comes out. Uh-huh. So what what is going on there? Yeah, uh, apparently she can fucking turn into Wolverine. As <laughs> I was well. gonna say she's got to have an endoskeleton that's made out of adamantium or right. something. Something. like it's well that's the sequel we ooh, explore that oh all right i'm in i'm here oh shit weapon x malignant hell <laughs> all yeah right. all right fellas uh well let's get into for the final time this season mm-hmm. prop cop if this is your first episode tuning in, welcome and goodbye. This is the end of the season. <laughs> Later, bitches. <laughs> prop Cop is where we look at all the props in the movie Malignant, and mm-hmm. we each take one for ourselves. Who wants to go first? Who's got a great prop cop? I'll go first. Okay. Go for it. Give me the chair, baby. Let's go. <laughs> That's why I wanted to go first. Well, Nathan, did you have a backup? I want the chair, but I will take the trophy dagger. That's great. As a backup. I mean, you can sit on my lap while I sit in the chair. Hey. Okay. Can I still hold my dagger? Oh. If you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, Nathan May, I will be painting your back porch red. Oh, oh, nice. I went with the police sketch artist drawing of Gabriel. <laughs> that was almost mine. It's good. That's pretty good. I got to frame that and put it above the mantle. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. It's great. All right. Well, what about bit part, which is where we look at the extras in the movie, the little side characters, preferably ones that don't have a name, uh-huh. and we play them ourselves. Hmm. So who would like to go first for bit part? I want to be the cop outside of the cell who shoots Scorpion like 18 times mm-hmm. and then gets his arm snapped. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. What about you, Mally? Also the chair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the chairman. All right. I want to be the guard that has the pacemaker explode. That's nice. good. That's good. It's just, it's such a crazy moment in this, in this already <laughs> crazy movie. All right. We're finally here, fellas. Mm-hmm. The final for the season, silver lining. Let's go. I'll go ahead and go first. Yeah. I think that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's not that crazy. Okay. But that sketch artist fucking nailed Gabriel's look. <laughs> like, he got it to a T. That dude uh-huh. is getting a promotion. Yeah. I doubt he's getting a promotion. <laughs> like you're great where you are like to like a better grave plot because that dude's definitely dead yeah. oh, did he die i don't know oh okay i thought I, I thought you knew i'm just assuming everyone in that building is dead yeah it, i mean it's safe to assume he's dead oh i hope not i hope he made it out because uh what's her name made it out the, the forensics detective she was alive at the end of that that's too. true, true. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Maybe they should be like become a couple. Like she, she keeps looking for love, and Kikoa keeps her buffing her. <laughs> Winnie and Bosco, the continuing <laughs> adventures. <laughs> Nathan, what about you? What's your silver lining to *Malignant*? Presuming she stays in the TV business, I think Sydney's going to be able to pitch and sell a hell of a pilot oh based on this God. experience. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she'll get yeah. to finally play the psychic like full time. That's right. That'll be her her, her full time gig. Yeah. <laughs> Mally, what about you? Um. Well, as we established right up top, Derek is an absolute piece of shit uh-huh. uh, and do we really want more Derek's in the world I think not so maybe it's a good thing that all of his would be children died I, I mean <laughs> I was gonna say maybe it's good that he's dead yeah, no that yeah. too but also we don't want Derek spawn running around <laughs> I mean is that my darkest silver lining of the season maybe I think so maybe okay great well we fucking nailed it guys <laughs> the real silver lining here is that all the women of this family are alive yes like the mom the stepmom the sister and Maddie true are all still alive All right, well, uh, as we like to do with every episode, we always like to offer an alternative, a double feature, a movie you watch right after Malignant Mm -hmm. to balance things out. If maybe Malignant left you a little dour with the fact that Gabriel's still out there. Uh What is a movie people should double feature with Malignant? So I mentioned it earlier in this episode, as well as the star of the film, but I think you should watch 1998's The Parent Trap, another movie with mischievous Uh, twins. All right. All right. (laughs) Mally, what do you got? Just to keep the cancer theme going i'm gonna say 50 50 oh, oh super underrated okay. oh so good and that also plays into the the madison and gabriel Malignant aspect theme. of it all too. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to go with another great horror comedy that doesn't make itself very self-aware in its comedic tones, uh-huh. but it's from last year, and it was a really good movie. If you say fucking knock at the cabin, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. Barbarian. Oh, uh, okay. I think that Barbarian was a great movie. Yes. I, I don't think it's as great as everyone made it out to be, but it's still a very good movie, uh-huh. and uh, I had a lot of fun with it. And, and man, that was a movie I saw in the theater, just me and Priscilla alone in the theater, and boy, did we have a fun time. Yeah. Just, Man, that was a great time. Oh, see, I saw Barbarian in a packed theater, and it was amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> see, I, m- my theater was dead silent through That's Barbarian. It was so weird. That is odd for that movie. I mean, yeah. in that instance, do you just, like... Do you be the one sole voice that's like, ha ha, <laughs> what do you do in that situation? <laughs> Hova. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, this thing crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you get and brush your shoulders off, barbarian. <laughs> Fellas, do we recommend malignant? Yes. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? I have to ask, <laughs> why are you yelling at me? <laughs> if you don't like this movie, I will throw a fucking chair at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this movie is wild. This was, oh. this was such a treat yes. to end the season on. Like, uh, a movie that I I just truly truly adore. Like all the other episodes this season were the main course. This is our dessert. Yes. This is what we we saved this for last. This is the s'mores. This is our s'mores. Oh, we were eating good. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to die right after this just like <laughs> in the menu. <laughs> yeah, this is this is such a refreshing horror movie mm-hmm. from someone that's already given us a lot of great ones too. Yes. Like, you may like James Wan or you may not, but you have to admit this dude is consistent uh-huh. and he is always kind of like reinventing the genre a little bit like i know no one likes this comparison but he kind of is our generation's john carpenter bold interesting he makes low budget genre films that are very much his style uh-huh. and like i know like people call jordan peele that and jordan peele completely rebuffed that idea uh-huh. because of course there is only one john carpenter don't get me wrong yes. but if we had to pick one i think james wan might be it look I, all i'll say is uh, every time i see his name attached to a project i make time for it right. i know that that it's going to be something i fuck with and that's so rare yeah it's 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 almost an auteur style but it's much more collaborative it's a seal of quality for me <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i i think this movie is fantastic yeah I don't know if it's his best, but it's it's certainly the most entertaining for mm-hmm. sure. I love it. I mean, it's it's no Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> a movie I still have not seen. Aquaman's really fun. Okay. It's not good, but okay. I <laughs> had a really great time with it. Well, if you've got uh, some thoughts on the movie Malignant, so we want to hear them, uh-huh. you can email them to us at the Silver Linings Playlist at gmail.com, or you can DM us on Instagram or Twitter. Mm-hmm. If you haven't already, give us a follow on those two platforms, as well as on TikTok, where you can watch clips from the show, some highlights and behind the scenes, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already, subscribe, rate, leave some feedback. We would really appreciate that, especially with this being the final episode of the season. Until we come back for season seven, we really could use those ratings, that feedback, because it lets other people find us more easily. The algorithm shows up for other people that way. Yeah. If you haven't already, follow us on Reddit as well. Check out our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. And in the downtime, in the hiatus, you know, tell your friends and family about the show. Listen to old episodes if you want. We got 156 back catalog episodes, not including the bonuses. God, we've wasted a lot of time. So much time. (laughs) So much time wasted. And yeah, fellas, that puts an end to season six wow. of the Silver Linings Playlist. Crazy. We did it. <laughs> Thank God, honestly. Not different than any other season, but this was a great season. Like, yeah, we had I agree. some moments. Had a blast. Yeah, I mean, I was only here for half the episode, so I had fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, no, I, I got nothing but positive things to say. And then, you know, the, the putting our show up on TikTok really change the game yeah Yeah. thank you to everyone who's been checking us out on there i'm sure it has no correlation with how big we are in china all of a sudden (laughs) (laughs) probably not but uh no lots of uh fan interaction i really appreciate and actually thanks to the people that emailed me with some suggestions for movies we should cover i'm putting them on the docket for next season so season seven you won't want to miss it we don't have a date obviously you set in mind for that just yet i would say probably uh late 2023 if i had to guess Uh but we'll see who knows Definitely not anytime sooner, probably. No, but I need a break from you, asshole. <laughs> I definitely need a break as well. Like you guys, you guys are my Gabriels. I'm just gonna put you in the back of my head for a bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah no th- thank you both for a great season and thank you audience member for checking us out mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully you stick with us when we come back for season seven twenty six more fantastic episodes such as malignant and uh, yeah job well done fellas can we just do like a writer strike season where we only do thirteen episodes <laughs> or something <laughs> sure that'll be a load off my back for sure.
All right. Well, is there anything we want to say either about Malignant for one last time or about the show in general? Anything at all? I guess maybe things to look out for. Mally, I don't know if you can talk about the stuff you're working on. No. Nope. Or Nathan, you either, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Then I won't. Oh, I mean, <laughs> if you can, if you can, go for no, it. But I, I just I, assumed uh, you could. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, just uh, check out Oh, That's a Scary Movie, the mm-hmm. show I do with past and future guest Ashley McLaughlin. Mm-hmm. Go listen to For New Eyes Only, my James Bond recap. Uh, retrospective podcast uh, mm-hmm. that's on the VHS files a, a feed on both on podcast platforms and YouTube mm-hmm. and the AIPT Comics podcast right. we interview uh, creators and, and review our favorite comics of the week right. how do you get anything done with all that fuck I don't shit going on, uh, I hate myself <laughs> well he does this during the day and at night Gabriel his Gabriel walks around and does other things <laughs> ah, right. got it. Mally you got anything you want to plug not that I can legally discuss on air I, sure I, I figured I figured <laughs> I would like to think that by the time this episode comes out, it won't be out now, but hopefully <laughs> mine and uh, Nathan's band, The Fever, The Rage, will have our debut album out, yeah, I hope, yeah. before season seven gets here, <laughs> but we'll see. That's a good, that, I think that's that's a fair. Oh, there actually is one thing I can plug that's up and coming. Yeah. Oh boy. I'm doing a spinoff podcast called The Fever, The Rage, <laughs> where I review one song off their debut album a week. Oh no. So look out for that. <laughs> this would be a nightmare. This. Dropping sometime <laughs> after their album comes out, boy. A minute by minute kind of thing, uh-huh. like or like I guess for songs, second by second, Star, like a Star Wars minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just one song a week. Each episode is four and a half hours long. Oh boy, <laughs> can't wait to hear it. So be, be check that check that out on your local podcasting platform. Yeah, the hater, the rage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. That's it from us. And like I said, enjoy our back catalog and stay subscribed because who knows? There may be a bonus episode. I've been trying to talk these guys into a bonus episode. I'm down. We've been talking about doing bonus episodes since the end of season one uh-huh. and we have yet to do it. I know. I know. So I'm, we're, I got one planned. Uh-huh. We'll see when time allows for us to do that. Okay. But, uh, I mean, you always talk about doing live watches of the movies. I tried to do one in this episode and you fuckers talk through the whole damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get to finish the movie. Next time, baby. <laughs> next time. There's always next time. Well, until season seven, whenever that is, probably later this year, but we'll find out. Until then, rest in peace, Oatmeal. And as always, I'm adopted. Molly Agnes. <laughs> oh, fuck a chair. Excelsior. 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 Oh, look at that. up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. See ya!